This video will deal with competence-based training. Now the video is based on the experiences of the UK and looking at some of the agencies uh, that are responsible for competence-based training in the UK. Uh, this may be a guideline to what happens elsewhere or it may be it acts as a standard uh, through which other systems may be compared and evaluated. So it's unashamedly from a UK perspective but it looks at the importance of competence-based training and some of the ways in which it can be delivered. So changes in the global economy and technical advancements have put greater expectations on the government to meet demands posed by external pressures. The truth is the economies are changing, all economies are changing, they're changing rapidly in response to very rapid technological change. Not just the introduction of computing systems and robotics but more efficient communication systems, uh, better ways of transferring data, uh, there is more immediacy about the, the whole industrial complex at the moment and it's likely to continue which means that skills and competencies need to be up to date. Uh, there's also recognition that perhaps the traditional academic routes that have been taken by students in the past are not the, the best routes to equip the modern working population. The, the fact is that uh, modern workers face ever-changing requirements because of changing technology, but they also face situations where they are in competition with uh, companies overseas through globalization and through uh, greater trade contacts between countries. So there is greater pressure on the, the workforce to be innovative and to be alert to the opportunities and be competent in dealing with the technologies and with the requirements of modern working practices. So now we have uh, a greater emphasis on competencies. That's not to say that traditional routes through education and into work have been abandoned. It simply means that we now have different routes into work and one of the routes may be coming through this very practical competence-based uh, approach. There is a need to introduce efficient working practices which embed knowledge, skills and attitudes, human resource policies, strategies and these are geared towards competencies, towards the ability to do the job efficiently and effective that the workers know precisely what is required and are able to deal with that. That may mean that they don't need to know a lot of other things. So perhaps in the past uh, there was greater emphasis on academic development. Perhaps now we recognize that people are different. Some people are more practical. Some people are more theoretical. And we need that blend in the working population. But we certainly need people who are competent in technologies, in working practices and who are flexible and capable of updating their skills in the light of uh, requirements within industry and commerce. Previously the UK government focused, uh, focused on acquiring knowledge through uh, educational institutions rather than practical skills. So, in the past, in the UK, there was the schooling system, which took uh, students up to roughly 18 years old, and then they would go to college or they would go to university. Some may go to college and then to university. Uh, some may go to college and perhaps some may go into companies for, for further training. But there was an ever-increasing trend towards the more academic. and this perhaps was uh, seen or, or is seen nowadays perhaps as, as, a, as a failure of the system. 
that students are different. Some are practical. Uh, some are keen on problem solving. Others simply need to know for the sake of knowledge. So people are different and it's recognizing the differences that's important and the educational system is now re-gearing itself, retuning itself so that students who are academic can go academic routes and students who are more theoretical can go in that way um, and also students who are practical who like working with their hands and like solving problems and like solving practical problems there are routes through education now tailored to those requirements the academic route some say resulted in poor performance of the British economy. There was a shortfall in practical skills. The economy needs bricklayers and glaziers and car mechanics and electricians and so on, plumbers and so on. That's what the economy needs. But the economy was turning out people who were skilled in law, skilled in sociology and perhaps in engineering or in astrophysics. But a lot of people were also left, being left behind because they didn't relate to that more theoretical route. So they dropped out. But there was nowhere for them to go. Their contribution was not fully recognised. So it's now considered by many that the poor performance, economic performance of the British economy in the latter decades of the 20th century, that was down to uh, a shortage of skills. The shortfall put greater pressure on government to implement more practical workplace competency uh, and to prepare people for the world of work. So the government became interested in what happens to the students who do not go to college or university. Does that mean they have no contribution to make or is it simply that their particular uh, skills and interests are not being addressed? What if someone wants to be a plumber? Why not give them the skills and the, the training that's necessary to make them excellent plumbers? Not just people who call themselves plumbers. These, these would be qualified plumbers. And the same for carpenters, uh, electricians, and, and so on and so on. So the government became interested in the development of this important sector of the population. And it started to institute uh, mechanisms and ways in which qualifications could be put into place and, and bodies put into place which will oversee the qualifications and and so on and we'll talk about these in the coming slides in this session but that essentially is the backdrop to what's happened the introduction of vocational qualifications are focused on competence-based training so competencies and vocational qualifications are linked the vocational qualifications enables the, the students, these more practical students, these more problem-solving students, to, to get qualifications and yet at the same time to develop their skills within their particular interest. So their, their competency is increased. It's, it's nurtured by the system and it's encouraged and it's recognised. The focus of vocational training is a curriculum based on developing skills and capabilities that are job specific. So for example, someone who wants to be a plumber, uh, they can take on um, practical qualifications, qualifications which they can relate to from their, from their work. They can see the usefulness of the qualification in their daily work and they're able to uh, plot out what skills and competencies they need to have 
to ensure that they are good at their job, that they become professional and become highly skilled at their work. The approach is very practical and learners are exposed to learning content and outcomes relevant to the job in which they are training. So the qualifications link to what they're doing in work. The qualifications examine what skills and competencies they should encounter and, and how they manage to pass those. How they manage to, to train so as to, to pass those tests and therefore achieve a vocational qualification as well as the practical training. Vocational qualifications were introduced to combat weaknesses in the traditional economic, uh, sorry, in the traditional um, educational system. Of course, it is economic as well. Uh, there, there was a weakness in the economic system caused by a lack of um, skill, skills and competencies, a lack of suitable workers. But the vocational qualifications were aimed to combat weaknesses in the traditional education system. Traditional education system was, as I said earlier, mostly based about the development of academic skills. Uh, quite theoretical pieces of reasoning in mathematics, in science, in, in the arts, in social sciences and so on. And there was a lot of emphasis in those areas. But here the vocational qualifications, well the assessment methods focused on knowledge gained rather than the uh, than skills or competencies. The, sorry, in, in, in the traditional system the assessment methods were based on knowledge, based on how much information or how many techniques for for problem solving in an academic sense could the student fit into his or her head. So the students were examined on knowledge. They weren't examined on skills or competencies. They weren't examined on their ability to, to cook or to fix, uh, fix a car or to do some plumbing or make joints in, in carpentry. These were broadly ignored and yet these are the skills that the economy was crying out for. So with the traditional system the, the students were developed to have knowledge, to have it in their heads. So the new facts from history and the new uh, the, the principles of in science. But these were not necessarily going to add to skills and competencies and fill the skills gap as existed in the country. There was a lot of emphasis uh, placed on formal education rather than skill and experiences gained. The skills and, and experiences were broadly ignored. These were something that just happened. Perhaps um, students would gain some skills and experiences by uh, working in, in uh, at the weekends, working in the holidays and picking up some skills associated with part-time work. But a lot of people and a lot of students would not have perhaps good quality part-time work. So by and large the, the skills that the economy needed, good electricians, good plumbers, good carpenters and so on, these were not being met, they were not being addressed. The formal education system was going down a different route. It was based on knowledge. There are now a range of vocational qualifications available for learners and are widely encouraged across the UK. So now there are institutions that look at skills and look at competencies and talk about the ways in which these may be developed. 
there's the National Council for, for Vocational Qualification. Now that's the overarching one. We'll talk about this again in a moment. There's the Qualification and Curriculum Authority. And there's the National Vocational Qualification. I said I will, we'll talk about those in turn. Let's start with the, the National Council for Vocational Qualification. This was established to develop a framework and a system for, for, for vocational education. And the, the qualifications are issued by this council. So it, it develops the framework, it develops a syllabus, it develops a syllabus for carpentry at a particular level or for uh, bricklaying at a particular level and it oversees the the quality of that qualification and students who are working in a very practical sense day to day working uh, in companies who are training to be let's say a bricklayers can also pick up on these qualifications and make sure that they're able to achieve everything that the qualification requires take an assessment and get a qualification It sets out a curriculum and guidelines that vocational qualifications must adhere to. So this is the overarching institution. This is the one that sets the guidelines and the curriculum. And the qualifications then are based on this. And all vocational qualifications are accredited and approved by the National Council for Vocational Qualification. So that's the institution that oversees the quality of the vocational qualifications. Now it encourages career development opportunities without the emphasis on formal academic achievement. Uh, most vocational qualifications do not have any pre-entry qualifications. What it does is it sets out standards and when the, the people, the students taking the qualification achieve that standard, it's ticked off. That's where they've got to. It doesn't matter what they've done before, providing they can meet that standard, they have passed that level they may go to the next level. So in this way um, the, the quality of the worker in terms of their ability to um, do the job in a practical sense is somehow underpinned by the, the qualification. The qualification states what the, the worker should be able to do and what, uh, what skills and what competencies the worker should have and at various stages so the worker is able to move through or the students able to move through the various levels. Support is flexible and job related training and learning. Assessments and training are carried out in the workplace and are ongoing. Course uh, completion is based on learner performance not on uh, some time frame. It's based on learner performance. So it's a very flexible system. The, the learning is done on the job. So as the person works and is able to uh, carry out more of the work, more of the work skillfully, they're able to relate more to the, the national qualification. This very practical syllabus and when they're able to demonstrate that they're able to uh, achieve what is required within the, the syllabus and, and pass uh, the, the assessment, then they will receive that qualification. But the training is on the job. The training uh, could be from the, the person's manager or from a foreman uh, on, on the job and it's carried out in the workplace. 
support employers objectives and course content are in line with job specific skills courses are taught in modules making it easier for employers to assess employee skill level and what has been learned so the syllabus sets out uh, requirements in modules there are different modules to be achieved uh, modules on various parts of that particular type of work and the student works day to day doing the job and also keeps an eye on what is required within the qualification gets training from uh, people within the within the company and eventually is able to pass the qualification it's a national qualification so the the worker or the student is then able to perhaps move company and the qualification underwrites his or her claim to be able to do certain tasks because he or she has passed the qualification so it's an education framework but this one is looking at competencies the ability of the person to do the job now the qualification and curriculum authority well this oversees the development of the national qualification framework setting a standard for national vocational qualifications so this one sets out the standards uh, what's the level what what a uh, what standard should the qualifications be pitched at and um, the the sequence of the qualifications it's a regulatory authority which takes charge of regulations standards curriculum qualifications in education and training the, the national curriculum uh, GNVQs um, the NVQs and apprenticeships it looks after all of the the practical uh, qualifications and it issues standards for particular qualifications and uh, issues the syllabus and and makes recommendations to uh, the the higher authorities to perhaps make changes to uh, qualifications bring the qualifications up to date uh, make sure that the the syllabuses are relevant uh, for today's economy and also looks at um, new competencies that are required as a consequence of changing working practices and changing technologies the national vocational qualification um, well this NVQs are part of the national qualifications framework these qualifications are competence based work related and demonstrate practical work experience these are quite popular in the UK and many people who work in hotels restaurants work as plumbers and carpenters and so on they will be aiming to achieve NVQs at different levels because that underpins their claims to be able to do the job they will have learnt about what skills and competencies are required to be efficient and good at that particular job or set of tasks and this demonstrates to future employers and indeed to the students and workers themselves that they are capable of doing the job the framework is developed by standard bodies so the NVQ framework is further developed in, in a very practical sense in other words it's implemented by in, uh, by um, organizations such as Edexcel City and Guilds and OCR and taught in colleges and local centers all frameworks must be approved by the qualifications and curriculum authority so these are qualifications that may run in colleges part-time perhaps in the evenings or uh, during the 
during days when when the employers will allow their uh, staff to attend these qualifications. They're very practical qualifications, but they lead on to the underwriting of the claim of the the worker to have certain skills and competencies and to produce the certificates and qualifications to show that they have passed that particular syllabus. As I said, very practical and competence based. NVQs, National Vocational Qualifications, are designed to reflect the skill, knowledge and capability to perform a job effectively. It's not academic. It's demonstrating the ability to do a particular job effectively. And that's what it's assessing. NVQs outline occupational standards and performance of competent people within their job. NVQs determine aspects of course content in line with best practice. So the the whole system looks at what is best practice and how are jobs changing and what are the new demands and pressures on workers and what are they expected to know and updates the syllabus accordingly and tries to ensure that workers within that particular type of employment have the skills and competencies necessary to take on work within that area. So this is quite a, a revolutionary change in thinking. Uh, traditionally students went to school, then they went to college or they went to university or went to both or, or went on to do some other things. Um, perhaps um, professional qualifications became an accountant or became a solicitor or whatever but essentially it was knowledge based there was a, a high emphasis a great emphasis on knowledge understanding knowledge understanding uh, principles uh, there was very little about doing and in a practical sense what we need are people who are able to do, people who are capable of building houses, who can do the plumbing and the electrics and uh, can make the furniture and so on, people who can fix the car, people who can develop buildings and so on and so on. And what we need are practical people and these, these set of qualifications guide their development, guide their, um, their training and assesses them and then in a sense validates them says to the world this is what they've done this is what they're capable of doing here's the syllabus they've passed this so it's quite a revolutionary development within the educational framework and that's all I'm going to say about <coughs> competence-based training um, an important area well worth looking into I'm going to leave it there and say thank you for watching